there, Cousin here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Today I'm here to review a romance that has stuck with me ever since I finished it, and although I didn't give it four stars for some very personal kind of estrotic reasons that I will be getting into, I think about these characters and I think about how well certain parts of it were done and I cannot wait to see what else this author writes. It's Too Much Man by Katie James. This came out in the beginning of December from Karina Press and they were kind enough to provide an advanced copy. Thank you. I don't normally read hockey romances but this one drew me in because the heroine is Piper, she is bi, and she has sworn off cisgender men. She doesn't like how when she's with a cisgender guy that it erases her bi identity. She doesn't feel as welcome in the queer community when she has a cisgender guy on her arm. And you know what, she likes women and non-binary folks too, so may as well just date them for now. And that's where her mind's at. But one day, this guy walks into her coffee shop and that's Gavin. He is a hockey player. He just had a devastating injury to his knee. It's career ending and he's just coming to grips with that. And he's also decided that today's the day he's going cold turkey on painkillers because he doesn't want to get, you know, wrapped up in all that ooh stuff that happens over there. So he decides he's, pain, he's really in pain. And he's like, you know what, if I can't have painkillers, I may as well have some coffee. He walks a few blocks to Piper's coffee shop and uh, is, frankly, not nice to Piper or the barista and just kind of a mean grump. Like, you don't want people acting like that. And so it's not a meet cute. It's whatever you call the opposite of that. The great thing is, a few days later, he goes back and apologizes. And it's a sincere apology, states what he did wrong. Um, you know, how he's working to correct it, gives his reasons, but says there's no excuse, and says, if you never want me to come back to your store, I'll do just that. Just say the word. So that's the beginning where I was like, okay, there's going to be care and consideration here. I am here for this. Gavin and Piper end up spending some more time together because her coffee shop is being used as a venue for a charity thing that the hockey team is doing. And there's definitely an attraction there, but Piper has sworn off cisgender men and Gavin is anticipating getting a job with the team that he has been with for like over a decade on the other coast and he's not thinking he'll be in town for too much longer. This isn't conducive to a long-term relationship so they decide to have a fling instead. And as you would expect, feelings get involved and things happen. Let's start with the good stuff, which of course includes that consideration. There is a great queer found family here and it usually takes me a couple books before I really get the found family vibes, but it was here right from the beginning. There's a lesbian couple down the street that Piper originally rented a room from before buying a house on the street herself. Um, there's the one of the baristas that works for her. There's lots of amazing, wonderful stuff happening there. The kind of friends who will just knock on your back door one morning because they knew you had a bad night and like, oh, coffee's ready. Come on, tell us everything that happened. Like really good stuff and ride or die friends. On the other side, Gavin has only been on the Philadelphia Firebirds for about a year. So he doesn't have any deep connections, but he does have some friends, some people maybe he didn't realize he was as close to as he did before he was injured. Um, his best friend is probably Carlos. And I love, well, first of all, I love the names in this. Uh, Gavin Williams is such a great hockey name. More often than not in hockey, there's a one kind of offbeat name with a very, very common name. So you have Gavin Williams in this book. If you can think about Wayne Gretzky, there's a ton, ton of Waynes. There's not so many Gretzkys in the world. Gordy Howe, Sidney Crosby, all of that. So Gavin Williams, great. And you know, his best friend is Carlos. And yes, there are non-white people who play hockey. And I love having their representation here. I love that the friends are the kind of friends that will leave you alone when you need to be left alone. And at the same time, they will tell you you're being an ass when you're being an ass and to shape up all out of love that comes across really well. And one of the parts that really worked for Gavin in the beginning of this relationship too, is that Piper just told him straight out, like, yeah, you, you were an ass. What the hell? And to him, that was a good thing, not something that put him off. But the part of this that I probably liked the most was Piper examining her bisexualness, her bi identity, and what it means to her, and what it means to her how she is perceived by the rest of the world. And something that Yvette over at Book Cave said in a review, it's probably a couple of years ago now, that really stuck with me is that compared with some of the other LGBTQI plus identities, there's a lot more ways to be bi. Like if you think about lesbian, you know, woman who likes woman, that's pretty set. And there's a 
some common storylines, let's say, about how that plays out in literature. Same thing with being gay. Um, but there are so many different ways to be bi, uh, which means liking more than one gender, by the way, not liking both genders because there's a lot of genders out there. So someone may be more attracted to this gender than that gender. They may be attracted to all kinds of genders and they may consider themselves pansexual. That like, there's so many different internal like experiences of being bi that it's hard to find particular kinds of rep in books because just saying that somebody's bi can mean a zillion different things. And here, Piper in the past has felt like her bi identity has been erased. She was in a queer community where they ignored her when she was with cisgender, cisgender guys. She doesn't like that when she's out in the world, people assume she's straight when she's with Gavin because she's on the arm of a cisgender guy. And that annoys her to no end because her I, bi-ness is such a huge part of her identity. She wants to be waving a flag all the time saying, hey, yo, I'm bi. So watching her wrestle with that and deal with that and how who she's attracted to is separate from who she's saying she will or won't date and how that's worked through i found so interesting and at least i think so well done and i'm very excited to see that in the next book um it's going to be a hockey player who's bi and i'm very curious to see how that bias will be i'm guessing different and how that will work out i love the interiority the way we are in piper and gavin's thoughts and how all of that plays out i like the writing there's some really nice turns of maybe not turns of phrases but situations that just make a lot of sense like piper ends up going into this self-pity mode for three days and the way she comes out of it is she comes downstairs and she raises all of the blinds that have been down for three days and you know she takes some, she cleans up the kitchen and she does, and that just felt so real and right to me. Like I have definitely done that where I've fallen into a pit of despair. And then after my time is done, it's like, okay, let's get everything back to rights. And that just resonated with me. So all this stuff I like about the book is why I haven't been able to get it out of my head for the past two weeks and why I've decided to do a full video review for it, uh, just to get all of my thoughts out and into the world because I want to share them. That being said, there are a bunch of things that I didn't care for. And I have to preface this with the fact that I grew up watching hockey. Hockey is in my blood. I skate, like I know a bunch about the game and I have to admit, I don't know as many things about how the game is in the past, maybe five years or so, because I live in Japan. I know a lot about hockey. I also know a bunch about medicine because I'm a medical interpreter. So I am one of those people that is well positioned to find nitpicks and mistakes in both of those categories. And I have them. First of all, the timing seems off. We know it's summer and I was assuming by the way that events were happening and the, you know, like when training camps were and stuff that we were in at the earliest late July, most likely August. And that's when all this was taking place. But then like three quarters through the book, somebody makes a reference to July 4th coming up. And I'm just, no, no, you cannot have all this hockey stuff happening at the end of June because the Stanley Cup is awarded in the beginning of June, sometimes closer to mid June. And there just wasn't enough time there for all of this stuff to happen. So things like that threw me off. There's a throwaway line about how one player pulls the jersey of another one over his head in a fight and every single player has a tie down on the back of their jersey. And this isn't a new thing. I have my jerseys from 15 years ago have these and it attaches the jersey to the hockey pants and that way you can't lift the jersey over the head. And it's true that some players don't attach the tie down, but they're usually not fighters. They're not expecting to use it. So if a player doesn't attach the tie down, they get in a fight. It's not going to be a good fight. It's going to be a blowout anyway. And this was described as a really good fight. And it's true that like sometimes the tie downs break, I guess, every once in a blue moon, like once every several years in the whole league. So I couldn't say it's completely wrong, but it made me think way too much to be happy about this situation. And as far as the medical stuff, a lot of it is kept vague, which frankly is the way to go if you're going to write medical stuff into a book and you're not a medical expert because it prevents you from getting stuff wrong. However, when the characters do finally have sex, it is a bad knee day for Gavin and he still does missionary. And that's not on top and that's not going to be good on a bad knee. It's just not. I was actually looking forward to some inventive positions to keep him off his knee. And there's a very little line later that was like, oh, maybe I got 
a little excited and I forgot about my knees like oh in that position it would hurt so much you wouldn't be able to forget it <laughs> I don't think so that was just like another check off for me but I recognize that those are nitpicks and they affect my rating but they may not affect yours but overall if you are looking for some queer rep that is not the usual if you are looking for a book that has some angst to it but angsty people more than angsty situations this is a book for you if you like found family if you like side characters that you can't wait to get their own happily ever afters if you like hockey um maybe well yeah if you, if you know a lot about hockey you may have some of the nitpicks i did but still i thoroughly enjoyed the process of reading this book i am excited to see what the next book in the series will be like and yeah just overall good nitpicks but good if you've read this book if you would like to read this book or if you know of any other hockey romances that stand up to scrutiny as far as the hockey stuff is concerned let me know down in the comments below thank you for watching subscribe if you're new and i'll see you in the next video bye